Hello, everybody. Welcome into Letterman Row. I'm Austin Ward, and this is Buckeye Q. You know this guy right over here, Beanie Wells, former Ohio State and NFL running back. Uh, through three weeks, this running game, it's got to be, it's rolling a little bit. They're even getting under center. you yes. got to like what you're seeing so I far, Beanie. I am loving it. I mean, uh, <laughs> we're getting an opportunity to see these guys develop right before our eyes. And when I talk about develop, obviously we know what J.K. could do. Yeah. But now we got another guy, Master T, <laughs> coming on board. we got a new offensive line, and we got a new – do I want to call it a new scheme? Yeah, because we've never seen <laughs> an Urban Meyer team get under center, and this is a beautiful sight to see at times. And Yeah, all right, so J.K. Dobbins <laughs> is the Big Ten Player of the Week, co-offensive player of the week. We know what he can do. We've mm-hmm. talked about it a lot. But what's interesting, Beanie, you alluded to it there, the backup situation. In camp, it looked like maybe Demario McCall was going to make the move, but going further back, you and I have done a couple buck IQs on Master Teague, mm-hmm. and I said this to him afterwards. I said, I thought maybe you were a short yardage guy. Right. Not an all-around guy, mm-hmm. so I I was wrong. I'm sorry. I, I just I'm, I was honest with him. So we're right. having this conversation, man to man. I'm saying I'm going to speak only for myself. I was wrong. What do you think about Master T? I, I like what I'm seeing. Uh, you know, he, I keep trying to go back and and look at you know what Buckeye running back he reminds me of, and I really can't pinpoint one because you know normally we got the bigger guys and they are a little bit elusive. Master is one of those guys that just pounds it, straight up pounds it. If you're in front of him, he's going to run you over or run through the tackle. I mean, it's almost like... You know whose name they're dropping. Ron Dane. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I've heard a, I heard a lot of comparisons to myself. I don't see it there, but okay. I, I more so see like kind of a Ron Dane type runner style. Yeah. I don't think that he's got quite your speed. He's not nearly... He's built well. Right. But he's not nearly as strong as you, but he has... That willingness, I think, to go mm-hmm. through contact that you used to have. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's one of the things that you, f- you first notice with him is his ability to be able to take on contact, take on defenders, and keep on going. He's not afraid of it. I mean, that's one of those things you, <laughs> you, you, you kind of worried about with young running backs is them not wanting to take on so much contact, and he has no care in the world whatsoever about that. Yeah, 100-yard day at Indiana, so you know when somebody does that, emerges at tailback, we got to have Beanie in here to watch <laughs> the tape and break it down. So let's go ahead. Let's roll the tape. All right, Beanie, let's dive right into it. This is He's still getting significant carries. Master Teague I'm talking about here. This is the second quarter in a 7-3 game. Ohio State has no problem putting him on the field, and here's what he does. Going off tackle, getting aggressive, moving the chains. Oh, man, and this is what I love with a young running back. You make your mind up, and you just go. And this one, it, it, the offensive line makes it so easy. Look at the push that they're getting right there. Getting up to the second level so quick. You're getting a great block by a wide receiver out there, and the lane is just right there for him just to run and get that first down. What's the, what's the difference here? You talked about this off the top, Beanie, that getting under center and this look for a running back, how does it compare uh, you know, to coming out of the old shotgun that we saw for you the know, last seven years? It switches years? it up because it makes the running back use their eyes so much more. You actually have to read okay. where you're going to run the ball to. A lot of times in that spread, there are often times to where you're running to a space and you're not necessarily reading anything. You're just running where the play is designed to go. But here you're having to read because he could have maybe, if this guy, if this defender crosses – that tackle's face, now he has to cut it back. Mm-hmm. But now we're in a situation where he's watching him reach, he's watching everybody reach, and the lane is right there for him to, for the taking. All right, so it's easy if it's this well blocked. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Master T, here we go. This is a more traditional look, but maybe even a little bit of fullback out of the shotgun. Uh, Ohio State's been doing that with Rashad Berry, Ruckert, uh, Luke Farrell, some other guys at tight ends. And here he goes. So a more familiar looking play. Uh, what do you see here? I see the vision. You go back just a tad bit so I can show you what I'm talking about here. I love the steps. As soon as he gets the ball, these two defenders think he's coming out here. Mm -hmm. And the vision by Master T to jump back right in between those blockers and get his shoulder pad squared to the line of scrimmage, I love that right there from a young runner. How how difficult is this cut to make? I mean, this guy obviously thinks he's got it played. He's got some help behind. I wouldn't know. You know, this seems like a... Do you tell a running back that this is his cutback option, or how do you how do you approach this? It's one of those field things. Uh, a lot of times when you see a, a backer cross over the top like this guy does, mm-hmm. then that tells you something, that something's going to be open backside. Okay. That linebacker ran over the top, that should automatically tell you as a runner, okay, there may be something backside if everybody gets their blocking and sealing them off. And here you have that with this offensive line. Is that a, like, just coaching tip? Do you, When you get your playbook, does it have an option? Like, hey, this would be the cutback option, or is that, as you're saying it's feel, is that all feel, or is there some instruction to it? See, that's all feel right there. Okay. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, after watching running backs time and time again, and after, you know, running this similar play, you start to notice where guys tend to go to. You start to notice what type of linebacker you're playing with. If you got an overzealous guy that loves to run over the top, when he sees a guard maybe pulling, then you know. Okay. This is, 
with this players right here, this is 47 Dave. We're in 46 and 47 Dave to a T. And what that is is a counter play. You got a pulling guard there. The ball is designed to go right outside of that pulling guard mm -hmm. or maybe just inside of him. But now the pulling guard doesn't get all the way around and you have that cutback lane right there. All right. It's wild how you can, you know, draw those comparisons from the old Ohio State offense, even when you change it to the spread and all this other stuff. Like some of the stuff with football and running game is never going to change, mm -hmm. uh, even if you have a little bit different look. And again, here's some of that. Uh, you probably see the similarities again for you. Yeah, this is just one of those zone plays out of the backfield. And what I love, I love <laughs> when a running back makes up his mind. Yeah. A lot of times you get young running backs in there, they pity pat back and forth. And here he is trying to figure out where he's going, makes up his mind, sticks his foot in the ground, and goes. Master T, not a lot of wiggle, but he can run through these arm tackles. He can power his way to those, make those three yeah. and four yarders, you know, six and ten yarders. <laughs> I wonder if some of this, and this is speculation on my part, is that Teague and Tony Alford is teaching JK after last year, make up your mind and go. Mm -hmm. Make up that, make that cut, put your foot in the ground and go. I wonder if it's just like that's trickling down that J.K. is trying to take that coaching. Master Teague is probably hearing the same thing because there's no real indecision here. He's doing the same thing that J.K. did against Indiana. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things he's hearing. He's hearing J.K. being coached, and he's knowing some of those runs when they go back in the film room on Sunday or, mm -hmm. or Monday, some of those runs that maybe J.K. could have had if he would have made up his decision <laughs> a little bit sooner. And now he's trying to take advantage of that coaching that was being done by Tony Alford. All right, pretty impressive there. He finishes it strong. I think this is one another carry that uh, Ohio State fans will like, uh, just or at least Ryan Day will like. Maybe the fans won't be as appreciative, but this is what he's talking about. Go get the four or five that a play's designed for. Absolutely. My coach would always tell me, if it's blocked for two, I need you to be able to get me three or four. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those situations. It's, it's well blocked, but the contact is right there initially. He runs through tackles. He bows his way and gets those extra yards, those tough yards that you like to see running backs get. Gets it down to the 40, and then that sets the stage for something a little bit uh, maybe more <laughs> impressive that, that people like. And get that uh, well blocked, or, or I don't know if it's just the alley here. What do you see on this play here that leads to a pretty good result for ah, Marcus? Man, the blocking has been phenomenal by this offensive line and by the tight ends that we're at in here. You see a pulling guard, so it, it's one of those day plays as well. Mm -hmm. And you got a lead blocker on this one. And look at the lane. The lane is there. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's doing their job. He breaks the tackle, and, and he's off to the races. I think, you know, there's been that talk, like I, ta I mentioned, the, the short yardage stuff with Teague, that, that he didn't have the speed. But, I mean, he's making a guy miss, yeah. and then he's pulling away and finishing here. This is, this is maybe one of the more athletic runs he's had. Absolutely, and the patience. You get to have a jab step to give, you know, that, that, that sensation and that thought that you may be going the other way. Mm -hmm. And then the patience, just stay behind this block. Because I know a lot of young runners – Tend to, okay, something there, I see an arm, let me go a different way. No, he trusts the offensive line, he trusts his blocks, and everybody gets a hat on a hat and does a phenomenal job. And now we're seeing his ability take over, that hard nose running Oof. style, break tackle, make guys <laughs> miss, take it a distance. It, this is a great view of it, too. Are you feeling like you're going to score if you see that out? Oh, absolutely. Okay. 100%. I mean, there shouldn't be anything stopping you when you got your shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage and you got a lane and you're in mid stride. And he doesn't let an arm get him. Yeah, there's your one guy that you got to make miss, right? Yep. All and right. that was easy, man. It's a cutover <laughs> right there. I mean, man. I love it. It's nice, nice stiff arm, too. What am I missing there? But look at that stiff arm. Look at that. Very it's, nice. I can't wait to hear a more breakdown Beanie and the Boom podcast as you guys talk about Master T. You're going to have to at this point. The oh, guy absolutely. is pushing for playing time. Find some comparisons for this guy. Uh, a great start. I know that uh, Beanie's excited about the running game. We're going to break down a lot more as the season goes along on Buck IQ. For Beanie Wells, I'm Austin Ward. We will see you next time.